Hello everyone and welcome to the Drama International Short Film Festival. The festival has been running for 45 years now and the program keeps developing, incorporating new activities, new actions, panels, workshops and talks. Today we're really excited to invite you to Yes We Can's strategic and logistic behind a can submission and more. The panel is curated by our Head of International Student Program, who's also a film director, Thanasis Neofotistos, and he will be joined by Claire Diao, film critic and distributor, and also a member of Director's Fortnite Selection Committee. Florian Fernandez, Cannes, uh, who is from Cannes Short Filmmaker, and he's the co uh, filmmaker marketplace, and he's the coordinator. Amanda Livanou, producer. Vasiliki Diagouma, communication and PR director at ECOME. Yorgos Aguilopoulos, Director of Development and Production, Greek Film Center, and Dilez Dimitriou, Filmmaker, Microfilm Curator from Earth. The panel will be in English, so um, everything will be in the English language. I hope you enjoy it, and uh, we will finish at 4 o'clock. Thank you. Hello, I'm Thanasis. Oh, sorry, what? Okay, <laughs> so we are here, uh, I don't know, we are here a little bit, let's introduce ourselves for, for, for starters, right? I'm here as a, as a head programmer of Student International Short Film Festival, I'm also a filmmaker, and we have another uh, microphone, please, for, uh... oh, there is, okay, great. So, uh, I want you to tell me a little bit about who are you and what's your experience uh, with Khan, let's say? Let's start from... Hello. No, Kalimera. Uh, my name is Claire Diao. I'm a sales agent and distributor for films from Africa and its diaspora, a company called Sudu Connection. I'm also a film critic and I uh, used to work for the director's fortnight between 2018 and 2022. Uh, in the selection committee of Paolo Moretti. And I also uh, work as a programmer with the Clermont-Ferrand International Short Film Festival and the FESPACO, which is the, the African film festival based in Ouagadougou, Burkina Faso. So my relation to Cannes was first to come as a journalist for many years and then to step into a selection committee the one of the Directors for Night, which is a um, parallel section of the Cannes Film Festival created in 1968 in reaction of the official film festival selection, which was for several years a kind of diplomatic selection, like every country was choosing the title that would represent the country. And uh, the Directors for Night appeared as a result and reaction of filmmakers who wanted to propose more content and other films made by filmmakers. So, um, yes, yes. Um, I'm Florian Fernandez and I'm um, industry coordinator for the Rendezvous Industry, which used to be called as well the Short Film Corners, which is the part, the industry part of the Cannes Court Metrage, so the short film entity dedicated to to, to short in Cannes. Um, and also, I act as a pre selector for other festivals like the FNC in Montreal, Encounters uh, in Bristol, for example. Um, and, um, and yeah, my relation to Cannes is that well, I've been working for Cannes Cometrage since 20. 14 and uh, and yeah when when talking about can for me it will be more on the short film industry side than on the competition side so but my my colleagues will be will be perfect for for that yes says hello uh, my name is Amanda Luanu I'm a Greek producer based in Athens um, film producer uh, and focusing on film shorts documentaries I've been working for a while, but uh, my company is called Nether Film, and we've had the company for about, for eight years now. Previous to that, I've also worked in the Greek Film Center during the zero years in distribution, and so I've uh, and I started in commercials, but now what we do is just films. So my, uh, my aim, because uh, our audience here is filmmakers and maybe online as well, so 
Also, from my experience in all this, as a filmmaker, I mean, uh, in uh, submitting stuff in the festivals, is uh, I have a question like, what is your opinion from your point of view? I mean, you are a programmer, but also a distributor. You work in the industry of Cannes, and you are a producer. Um, so, I have a short film, okay? And I want to submit to Cannes Film Festival. Uh, what should I do? before submitting? Uh, first of all, you have to know that applying to Cannes official selection is not applying to the Critics Week, neither the Directors Fortnight, because we receive various emails from filmmakers or producers believing that applying to one platform make them eligible to all the platform. It's not true because you have to pay some fees <laughs> and you have to know that when you prepare uh, the journey of your film that you will need some money to apply because A-list film festivals such as Cannes, Venice, Berlin, uh, Locarno, Sundance and so on, you will have to pay some fees to submit your film. So first of all, you have to check and I know that the rules, I think, for the official is 15 minutes maximum. I know that regarding the director's fortnight, we open to anyone. But I know that regarding the critics week, they just want first or second short films. So first of all, you should read carefully all the rules to be sure to apply to the good uh, competition or, you know, section. And because many, many filmmakers and producers, they just want to try, you know, so they send the, the, <laughs> the bottle mind. like okay they will see but no because we are watching thousand films so if you want to be the right fit just read carefully all the rules and regulation and if your film is 16 minutes then maybe reduce it or do not apply to the official competition and if your film is your third short so do not apply to the critics week because at one point you will pay and then you will receive an email as sorry you're not eligible but the, how much is the fee in the director's fourth night? Do you have it? I don't remember, but I think it's around 25 euro. 25. And the only exception is that the, the official competition of shorts is free to submit. But uh, it's only for films that last less than 15 minutes, as Claire said. So it's the, uh, an exception. And uh, yeah, talking, um, uh, Claire said everything. It's, it's the same for every festival. You really need to know where you are going and just you now try to... To, to go anywhere and also try to be focused on um, the previous years uh, of the festivals, try to see their lineup and if, if it can fit with your short or not. Uh, if it, because, uh, well, every festival has its own, uh, its own uh, perspective and its own artistic direction. So you will, uh, you will, you will, not everything will play like in Cannes and uh, in other festivals. Well, you have to check first if it can be a good fit or not, which is festival strategy, but maybe we can talk later. But you are also on FNC Montreal, short film, uh, it's, on, it's not a short, it is short? It's short and feature, yeah. okay. but only for short for me. And in Encounters as well, right? Yeah. And they are very uh, important film festivals. So can you also tell me about, there are, is there a fee or is there some uh, length uh, rules there as well? For, for the FNC, it's really wide because it's uh, 59 minutes, so there is almost no, no limit. And yet, it's, it's a, there is a fee, but I don't remember like, the exact one. I think it's uh, one that evolves with the time. Uh, and encounters, the limit is 40 minutes. And, um, and yeah, and encounters is, is a good example, for example, because like uh, this year, the, the, the artistic direction changed and they want to make something more. Um, with more hybrid formats, with more experimental film, with uh, and now they also mix programs of animation and fiction. They used to separate the two, and now they mix it, so they select less films. So you have also tried to you also try to, to to be aware of what are the evolutions of every festival and yeah, the lineup and the and as Claire said, like the regulations. And you can tell me about as a producer. I mean. Uh, 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 are, the, are the same thing. What, what do you feel when you have like to submit somewhere? Is there a fee? It's like something like okay, let's let's put it there. Or do you have a budget about that? What, what do you have a schedule about submitting? Usually, when we get to that stage, there's no budget left. But um, you know, it has to be done. And uh, of course, I think the f there's two things about how you 
where you go. One is the timing issue, of course. So depending on when you shot, so when you're done, you try to set up the festivals because you know roughly winter is Sundance, Rotterdam, Berlin, then talking about the, the timetable of the festivals. Because, you know, there's many, 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 many very good festivals. But of course, we all want to try the A-list ones. Then summer is Cannes, then it's Venice, and all that. Drama, Venice, uh, Toronto. Um, in terms of what fits, there's the practical stuff, as you say, the 15 minutes and all that. And I guess if you've been doing this a long time, it's not that I watch all the shorts in all the festivals or that I even go there, but you do get a, a sense, I guess, which is more instinct than something I can actually put to words about what fits where. So sometimes, and it's happened to me in the past, like people, I've shown things like 10, 15 years ago when I was younger and somebody would say, oh baby, this is Sundance. I didn't know what that meant. Now I think I maybe do a little bit more. So you do get a sense, or the awarded films, you get a sense maybe of what it is that they are kind of looking for. Or you think you do, because obviously you are wrong many, many times. And then in terms of applying, I know that we all feel that it's a big world out there, and especially if you're just starting out, that, you know, I don't know anybody. But in my experience, especially the big A-list festivals, they do try to find the new talents. They do watch the shorts. So, of course, it's much nicer for you if the director has already been to the festival so you can write and get a waiver and they're expecting the film and they will watch it. But A, they might not like it, still they won't take it. And B, I know cases, uh, and one case is Motorway 65, for example, where the director was completely unknown. She had not done a short, I didn't produce that film. Um, she had not done a short before. She came from video art and installations and sculpting. She did a short film and she submitted to Cannes herself to official competition. And she was, um, she was picked up, like with no contacts whatsoever, which means that it's possible and anybody can do it. So we shouldn't be scared. They are trying to find you, they're here. You know, they're trying to find you. So you just need to be there and, and keep trying. Talking about Khan, I mean, we have also uh, the Palm Door here amongst us, uh, Vasilis Ekatos. Hi, Vasilis. Uh, um, let's, do you want to come and say uh, uh, one word? What, like, what was also your experience in Cannes? I mean, you're here with us, and this is a Cannes. I'll take both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where should I? Yeah, what so what this, was this your experience? This wasn't staged, by the way. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, wh what is the question? Hi, no, everyone. I mean, I, I've asked what was the experience with Cannes, so what's your experience with Cannes? Look, the experience with Cannes starts for a filmmaker the first day he or she decides to become a filmmaker. I mean, it's always a dream, so you can be in a big, in a major festival like Cannes or Venice, Berlin, Sundance, etc. So this is when the relationship starts. But, um, and you always think it's never going to happen to you. I mean, personally, I, I did. I think you also with Venice and everything, you don't believe that you deserve this kind of treatment with your film or that it's even possible for people who work in such festivals to even like your film or to even watch your film. Because I think, you know, most people believe that the programmers don't even watch the films which is a lie, of course. And, but many people believe that because they don't want to get hurt when they get rejected. Uh, but we have to know, and everybody has to know, that programmers do watch their films. It's their job, and they're getting paid for it. I mean, it's not that it's a decision they make uh, afterwards. They have been selected for this specific job. And I always thought that when I started that it's a dark conspiracy behind everything that, you know, that there are people in cans or whatever and they decide to uh, pick your film because they know you or because, uh, I don't know, you have a very good producer, a very good sales agent or a manager or whatever. 
And I was very happy to realize that this isn't true. Uh, you, the, you asked uh, Claire before, uh, what is the first step for getting accepted in Cannes? And I, I believe it is make a good film. That's what we were talking with Yorgo Zoys there. That this is the answer for us. Make a good film. And uh, to be honest with you, I remember uh, that uh, at some point in my life, it was like, I think, 2017, and I was with my producer, Eleni Kosifidou. We were in Clermont-Ferrand for the, for the um, I don't know how it's called, uh, Euro Connection. And we were there with a script, and we had to pitch it. So there were so many producers and so many agents, but mostly producers, and we wanted to co-produce with them. And it was my first time in a big festival. I've never done anything before. I've only been here in drama. Uh, and it was my first experience. So we went there. And I remember that we have so many uh, appointments with producers. And I, I was always thinking that, oh, yeah, if we go with this producer, maybe he knows someone in Cannes. Or maybe we go with this producer, maybe he knows someone in Venice. And, and I was like getting crazy. And my producer told me, is it okay if I swear? <laughs> it's a, a live uh, video. Okay, okay. So, and so I was like, I was busting her balls like all night. Like, what? We should go with him or we should go with her and blah, blah, blah. And this connection may appear. And she was just listening to me like this. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. And I was like, no, no, seriously. I mean, you have to look at it. You shouldn't care about the festival. You should just concentrate on your film and say, "No, you don't. You don't realize what you're saying. That we don't get. We're not getting paid for making films. This is our payment." And she was like, "No, your payment is to make a good film, and you can watch it after ten years." And I was just mumbling all the time about the festivals. And at some point, she just hits her hair in the table. We're in a bar. And I said, "Can I or no?" <laughs> okay. So and she said, "Don't become a red carpet." <laughs> in your life, man, just make films. <laughs> and this is what changed my life. And I realized that if I concentrate and make good films, I have many, many chances of getting accepted into Cannes or wherever. So this is my story with the festival. <laughs> Thank you very much, Vasilis. No worries, no worries. And it was amazing that uh, we have it with you. He's uh, the jury of international competition and he has jury duties. So Vasilis, yeah. thank you again. So I was, um, about the talk we, we were having, I have uh, some two points to mention. The first is like, so maybe more about the producer here, like uh, you, have the, you, you don't have the budget, you said, but your director wants to be like in a festival, but you know that the film, because of, of your experience, will not be in this festival. Do you submit to the festival? I think you do, yeah. Um, I think you do, um, or we would do it. I mean, you can't say to somebody you can't try can, or uh, Berlin, or Sundance. Um, to be fair, we get a few waivers just because we know pe some people, so programmers mostly are okay about sending waivers, although that's changing. I think, in shorts, because there's so many shorts. I mean, personally, I don't like to create too much traffic for programmers. I mean, there's nobody's help if the programmers have to watch 5,000 films. They already, every year, they watch more and more films. So it's, I wouldn't want to share with programmers stuff that I don't personally believe in. But then again, you can't stop the director when they want to try. And of course, we don't, I don't know everything. I may be wrong. So I think you do. Yes, you submit. Yeah, and hope dies last, right? Yes. I mean, this is a poker. Many, many times it's a poker. So you never know. As you said, uh, motorway, nobody knows uh, the director, so, but she was in Cannes. So you, you, maybe in the first place, you say, oh, no, we shouldn't submit. You have to be from a smaller festival at first, etc. So it was like, uh, it was a huge success for that. I would never say to somebody if I thought that their film was good, oh, let's start with a smaller festival. The, I mentioned Motorway because, which I did not produce and I did not submit because she really did, know, did not know anybody. It was just submitted. And I know the Kanzen, I think, also 
liked the film and then it was selected in the official competition. And I mention it as an example that you don't need to know people. I don't know, in Greece, because we, this is a political point now, because we have this very problematic state, which is, you know, everybody thinks you need to know somebody to do something. And sometimes it's true in life with small even things like, I don't know, you can't get a parking permit in your street and you need to call the minister if you know them and then it's sorted out. I'm a random example. But in film, I seriously believe and in art in general, A, if you think that it's about knowing people, go do something else and B, it's not and you should try and, and the world is out there and again, they're here. They're, look, they're looking to find things. It's in their interest. That's their job, to find you, somebody. So it's important to believe that. Otherwise, we shouldn't do this. And then, third point, festivals are not everything. Connected to Vasilis' producer, um, festivals are not everything. Of course, it's super great. And especially for a short filmmaker, you want to fund your, your feature. You know, it doesn't get better than can. I'm not going to say it's not enjoyable and it's not, you know, it doesn't give you a sense of purpose. But it, your short film, your first one might not do so well. Then you learn and you go again. If you'd told me 15 years ago, because I'm, I've been around for a while, that Greek films would become popular, I'm talking about features also, I would never have thought. It was like Olympiacos, you know, you would never get the, the Champions League. It was the stone years, and it changed. So it's important. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't true. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. About the perspective of the, of the, of the industry, or what's, uh, I mean, I've been talking with industry people before, and they were saying maybe exactly the opposite, like, uh, don't waste your your money and time uh, waiting for a festival that probably you're, you're not fit into it, you know? You have a short film that doesn't fit to Berinale, maybe, which has a specific uh, point of view, and it costs, like, I don't know what, or how much today, it's like 80 euros, it's too much for a short film. And, uh, but still, people, as uh, Amanda says, they are uh, submitting because they have to and they want to. What, what would you suggest? I wanted to react uh, to Vasily's quote when he said, make a, a good short. I just want to point the fact that if you are rejected from one film festival, doesn't mean that your film is bad. A film rejected in Cannes can be in competition in Berlin or in Locarno or in Venice. So it means that every committee has its own tests. And you, if you believe in your film, you should continue applying. I heard one uh, filmmaker once who told me out of 100 submissions, she had seven selections. Imagine, 100 submissions, only seven selections. But she believed in it and she continued. So just I was just pointing that. And regarding where to apply and the, the submission fees, uh, I work a lot on this as a sales agent distributor for short films, but it's a kind of strategy you have to do together. And I agree with what she said. It's quite hard when you are a producer to say no to the dreams and beliefs of the filmmaker. But I remember once um, discussing with a filmmaker and his producer, and he wanted to apply to Director's Fortnight. But I know he had a really narrative style. And I knew that my delegate was looking for experimental films. So I knew he will apply and we want uh, select the film. So I told them, like, don't lose your time, do not apply. But then I saw in the submission that they applied. So I contacted them, like, why did you apply? I told you not to. We could not do not apply because the filmmaker really wants it. So he preferred to have a rejection letter from the selection committee than not trying and believing that maybe if he could have applied, he would have been selected. So yeah, just continue. If you believe in your film, apply everywhere. There are a thousand film festivals and out of the A-list film festival, there are other really great film festivals and there is always a place for you and your film. Yeah, at some point also the question is practical if you, you have to have the budget to apply uh, at, at some point. And uh, as Claire said, uh, it's a strategy. Uh, she knows that 
because she works as a distributor and uh, having a distributor is, is good for a filmmaker because she, it, it will also be the opportunity for the filmmaker to be um, to let it go a bit and to to let the the ones uh, who knows a bit maybe more than them so what what to do but uh, yeah if you are doing the distribution by yourself uh, you you still have to have some money to do that and you have to be practical so first try to enter to the A-list festival and if you don't succeed then you can apply to the others but don't try to apply everywhere all at once I think you have to keep your premiere safe first and then when you will be selected in a festival you will be able to to apply to others more freely I would say and uh, about about this I mean in Cannes do you suggest that someone should uh, apply to the official competition and at the same time to cement the critique and to f directors fortnight or they should uh, apply to one of the of, of the festival of the, the sections what do i recommend that's yeah. a good question <laughs> <laughs> it really depends on the film for me but uh, also you you also need to to talk about the industry you can also try to see outside from the festival circuit itself and to see what are the industry events that can help you meet with the decision makers so uh, festival programmers distributors uh, buyers etc that can that can help you to reach a new step for this film or for a next project and that's what we try to do at, for the rendezvous industry it's uh, it's not a selection for like the, the official selection it's a curation of short films that are included in a market catalog and then we organize panels, master classes, breakfast meetings, a lot of events that help you, the creation, so like the filmmakers to meet with the decision makers, such as Claire, such as producers, such as many other filmmakers, uh, professionals, and this is also a way to see things. You you, you have to to be uh, like open, like to, to see that there are some other events that can help you reach out your project needs i would say like labs as well like markets regarding your question for can i will add that if your film is under 15 minutes and is a first or second short and has a new way of storytelling and so on then you can apply to the three section because you have a deadlines as well so if you only apply to Cannes official selection and and then i don't know two months later you say oh i should apply to critics week and the call for films is closed then you fucked up <laughs> uh, but there are there are three different uh, committees yeah, right different committees. they are working each other i mean they know which films the other film will have shortlisted in you know depending on the affinities but sometimes i, I remember because i, I of course, my main focus is Africa. So I really watch carefully all the entries coming from the continent. And one day I, I saw a fantastic Egyptian short, like calling all my colleagues, you have to watch this short, it's amazing. And a few days later, we received the information that it was in the main competition in Cannes, official selection. So yeah, they applied to both selection and then sometimes you just have the news from the producer, like, oh, sorry, we, we got the invitation, which is different from other section because sometimes when it's the official selection is the let's say the best on top like no one will take off the film from there to go somewhere else but sometimes people use their invitation from directors fortnight or critics week just to go to let's say venice competition uh Cannes official selection and so on they you know they reach the committees to say hey we are invited do you offer something else and for this, the committee have to rush and watch the film. That's the true, I tell you, <laughs> about the, the behind of the programmers. When you hear that the film is invited somewhere, then you have to watch it carefully and quickly to give your answer. When you say invitation, uh, you mean uh, the film has been submitted through the normal procedure, right? And yeah, it has yeah. been uh, shortlisted yes. and then it has... Exactly. So this is like, these three steps is a shortlist... Uh, you, you, do you want to tell me about, like, to I, about the procedure? I don't of know for the other film? committees. We yeah, in your festival. we had a kind of short list during the pandemic because we sent a lot of letters of interest. Yeah, at the director's fortnight, we talk of letter of interest. Like, okay, we appreciate your film, but we are still uh, reviewing films, so we don't know if you will be selected. And then when you are selected, you receive the official letter of selection. But we discover really quickly with the with Paolo Moretti, that many films that receive this letter 
it was used against us because in fact they were the but it was more a deal of sales agent and distributor they were knocking at every doors like i don't know venice competition and the official competition hey directors fortnite invited us what do you say and we lose so many films like this that we learned that sometimes don't send it too early because okay, it works yeah. against you so there is a, a, the invitation comes and then the the sales agent or the producer or the, the film director says to official competition immediately, hello, I was already selected in yeah. private yeah. in uh, fourth night. Because Do you want my film or not? Okay, yeah. Because it brings interest. You have 2,000 films to watch and then suddenly you realize that one is invited somewhere. So the, this one should be interesting. So you watch it just to know, okay, does it fit to my criteria, my test? Will it be good in my lineup or not? Sometimes we watch films and we're like, oh, this is a film for the Critics Week. Or this is a film for maybe the official competition. You know, but sometimes it's not true. Then we follow everyone's uh, uh, selection when it's announced and then it goes. But Cannes is really particular because until the official press conference, we cannot move on anything. We have to expect because sometimes just the day before some films learn that they are selected. So sometimes they are in our short lists and then we have to remake another selection because some titles disappeared. So yes, that's the trip. But regarding short films, mostly people are so happy to be selected that we don't really have this kind of, uh, oh no, sorry, we, we go somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. But also I want to say to that, that sometimes it's happened to me, not with a short film, with a documentary. Uh, we got selected at a very, very prestigious US festival that I had never submitted to. And uh, it, the invitation came at the very last minute, like Friday night, very late for us because morning for them. And they said, oh, is this film available for, we just came across this wonderful film and is this film available for a US premiere? And it's like, yes, it is. And then when we got there, I asked them, I said, well, I, we never sent the film to you. And it was a programmer from another film festival that we had applied to who loved the film and it wasn't picked up at the other festival. And she called the programmer and said, listen, I've seen this film and I think it's for you. We didn't pick it up, but I think you love it. So programmers can do that. I, th I think even in Cannes, sometimes it happens that, you know, as you say, it's three different parameters like the official uh, La Semaine and the Kanzen. So if, I don't know, in the official they see something which is kind of experimental, they might tell the Kanzen depending on their relationships. So I think programmers talk to one another yeah, and sure. you never know how the journey goes. So it's yet again important to try. Yeah, and um, I mean, again, before submitting to Khan, we, we have Khan as a, like a, as a prototype, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, but you it are, has to be. You, you are invited from here. Uh, the first question is, uh, so Khan co official competition, I mean, you, you also mentioned about the timetable of the festival. I mean, you have finished your film, let's say on uh, September or August. Do you wait until can submission or do you submit to Bernale first? I mean, or uh, do you wait for Cannes? I mean, is it Cannes, the first festival you have to submit? Like, I personally don't wait. I personally would recommend not waiting. It's not nice for a film to be in the boxes, as we say, in, you know. Um, this is a very archaic term and and refers to film negative, but anyway. Um, I would recommend not waiting. I think it's important for the film to start traveling, and even if it gets rejected, you, like, as I say, you never know how it goes. Um, and I, of course, Cannes is number one, and by far number one, but it's not the end of the world, so you can do a, you know, films have started in Toronto or in Venice or in Berlin or in other festivals. So I would recommend following your timetable unless you're convinced that the film is is not for Venice lineup or for Berlin. I agree. I'm provocative. I just uh, I want <laughs> to catch something. Um, at the same time, for example, uh, but do you believe that? A, f a film has to be attached with a sales agent, for example, for starters. Or 
for you guys in the industry, do you believe that a film that have been submitted before in all these festivals, and because, I don't know, probably the programmers uh, know the film from around the festival circuit, uh, is it maybe like an old film in a film has started after Cannes and then didn't, sub didn't get into Venice, Locarno, Toronto, Bernale, etc. And then it came to Cannes uh, one year later. But you already know the film is in the circuit. Is it something that will affect the decision of the film? Is it an old film for you? As you said, it's like playing poker. I cannot answer this question. <laughs> it's, I don't think, like, you You mean the word of mouth that this film has been uh, yeah. applying, applying, applying around? Well, at, at least, um, as long as it still fits to the criteria, which we still have to consider it. And why won't you pick it in, I don't know, uh, Feb uh, no, for Directors for Night, it will be around April if it was applying since September. I mean, as she says, there is an agenda of film festival regarding the year-round calendar. So you, you apply, you, I mean, that's the game. And as a distributor, I worked on a film from the Caribbean island, and which is quite hard because it's French, but it's not really considered by French by programmers. And, uh, <laughs> and we applied for from November 21st. The film made its world premiere in September 22. 20. No, we started on November 2020. It made its world premiere on September 2021. So I had the filmmaker almost dying, you know, like my film doesn't work. No one wants it. But it was like, no, we have to find the right uh, fit. And it made a wonderful career afterwards. So it's just a matter of being patient. And as I said, apply, apply, apply. And one day, suddenly someone will recognize <laughs> the talent behind. <laughs> And um, about being influenced by anything, I, we are all influenced by our own taste. It's something subjective uh, when you're a programmer, but uh, well, you've, you cannot plan it. And um, I would say that if the film is good, it's good. As we said, uh, it's not because you will have the distributor behind that the, the film will be taken or a, a huge producer behind if the film is good in the end. Well, of course, I, I mean, I have seen one year a film, not a Greek one, uh, which was in uh, official competition of Cannes. It, it felt something uh, like it was, I don't know, it didn't feel that it, it was a complete film. It felt like so, he could have cut it some minutes at the end, maybe to fit on the 15 uh, minutes of the, <laughs> of the program. Uh, of course, I'm not asking if you recommend something like that, but maybe, and I'm not uh, suggesting, but maybe some uh, directors, when you have your mind of uh, creating the film, do you suggest for the, the filmmakers to have a focus like, okay, I have to make a 15 minutes film to be, to submit to Cannes? Is this something that uh, you could uh, know, of course. Yeah, it was like, uh, <laughs> but, but after you make the film, do you feel that a sales agent is, a thing that it should a short filmmaker have from uh, before submitted to Cannes? No, it's the film. As you said, it's there are not thousands of sales agents for all the short films made worldwide. So it's just luck if you have one because it's a second, let's say, a second breath for the film, someone who has other strategy, other contacts. So, of course, it's more interesting for the film. But film festivals are not looking for who's behind this show to know that we take it or we don't. It's really, as Vasily said earlier, the, the good film that counts, hopefully. <laughs> you, you, you don't. I mean, you are not uh, seeing the, what is behind the film. That's important, I mean, to know. Uh, in the short film world, I won't say the same thing regarding feature films. Yeah, that's great. And, but I know that the submissions in Cannes is like 4,000 short films per year, maybe more, 5,000? Uh, 5, well, the official competition, yeah, it's, it's close to 4,000, a bit 4, less. 4,000. And, 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 and they take only 10 films, uh, approximately. So uh, I have done my math, it's like 0.01% uh, 
Did you make it for Sundance as well? No. <laughs> uh, you're, uh, you're presenting Sundance? No. Uh, ah, so the count is less. They take like 150, something like that, and they receive uh, more than 10,000. So. Yeah, I mean, so it's almost, uh, as you said before, a poker. It's something as a, as a lottery, right? At the end. I mean, I, I'm meaning when you have a good film and a, above, then you are like eligible to be part of Cannes. But after that step, it's about luck being part of the competition. So is it Cannes awards the effort, the physical, uh, the emotional effort of someone waiting, submitting, maybe rejecting for this 0.01% of possibility of be part of Khan? It's a strategy. Like, you, you took the example of a film ready in September, so it should apply to Sundance, which is in January, and then to Berlinale, which is in February, and then in Cannes, which is in May, and then in Locarno, which is in August, and then Venice and Toronto, which are in September. But you can also decide that you first want to apply to Cannes, then what will you do? You will apply really late and you will change the credits on your film. So you will put it as 2023 instead of 2022 because it's also a matter of the year of production of your film that brings interest. And you can start your journey from Cannes and then Locarno, Venice, Toronto. So it's really a question of strategy and what you want. And this strategy is is, is, a, is a work of, of the film director, of the producer, of the sales agent, whose who's work is More that? the sales agent, but nobody, well, not everybody has one. So when you, have, when you are a filmmaker, sometimes it can be yeah, tricky to elaborate the strategy. But, well, I think you, there are so many, um, so many information now on the web that you can find about like maybe the, like the 100 short film festival that really counts in the world. So uh, in the end, you can you can really find your way. And I, I would recommend to try to apply also to festivals where you can feel there are there is a good presence of the industry because this is where you are going to meet some interesting people. Um, I know so I can I can like name so many festivals in Europe that have a real industry uh, presence so you uh, once again check the lineup and also check the industry delegates of the, of the past years and see what are the events that each festival organize for the industry and for the filmmakers and um, and yeah this is probably the best. I want to add something it's sometimes we have filmmakers as you said coming out of the blue applying themselves and it happened once at the director's fortnight that someone wrote to us like hi i'm selected at a really small festival lost in the united states and uh, can you please give me your answer so that i can accept the invitation and one of the programmer who really loved uh, the short had to write you know to contact the filmmaker to t to say hey there is a big difference between Directors Fortnite and the festival you're applying. So it was a kind of filmmakers who applied everywhere and who was ready to start his journey through the first film festival who said yes. So it's also in terms of strategy and calendar to think about, okay, I apply everywhere, but think carefully that you will not have the same journey if you start by Cannes or if you start by another film festival in your own country, for example. It's yeah. It's important to think about this because we had someone sometimes to exchange with filmmakers and explain to them that well, it's uh, we almost ask for a world premiere, so <laughs> do not uh, uh, erase your chance by accepting too quickly another invitation. And uh, some you, you you were mentioning about the world premiere is very important to keep it safe and uh, maybe having it somewhere that, yeah, for, for, for me, it's, uh, the film has to find its audience. This is the most important thing. I mean, I don't know, not all the films, the audience is on Cannes. Maybe you can go to Cannes and be lost, you know, afterwards. Uh, maybe uh, your audience is somewhere else in Clermont-Ferrand. I don't know. I mean, you, you have to search and find the best audience for your film. Uh, but what's, uh, what some tips I'm looking for about be, be before that, like uh, the world premiere, as you're mentioning, um, 
because I know some people, some uh, filmmakers, some meeting when they in the slot that says when you when did your film finished, and they are saying uh, the truth, like it finished uh, when I gave my film to the producer or whatever. But usually in a short film, it could be at the very end when it's premiering. So my, um, for, for me, the film can finish a little bit before the premiere in order to be more and more fresh. Uh, what do you suggest about that? Is this something that uh, you, you feel that the, the, the finished film, the, the year of the film is the year that is premiering or the year that is actually finish the shootings? The more recent date you can put, you should put. Because the life of a short film is almost two years in the film festival circuit. So if you put, I don't know, uh, May 2021st and the film starts its journey in February 2022nd, you already lost almost six or eight months for the following uh, film festival application that will ask films from 2022nd and so on. So yeah. The more recent date you can put is almost when you make your DCP or something like that. Yeah. It's the e exporting best. is part of the post production. Mm. So probably yeah. uh, as a producer, what do you say? I agree. Um, you try to make it as late as possible, and then once it gets selected and it, you have a world premiere date, we usually use that date. So say it gets selected to in January to Sundance or Clermont-Ferrand, the, the winter festivals in 2022, it doesn't matter when you shot it, you say 2022. So the film counts as 2022. You said, so sales, it's not very important for a film selection. <laughs> uh, is the other stuff important, like statistics? I mean, gender now? Um, Country, no more women now. It counts because there were a lot of fight. There was a Me Too movement, and uh, especially in France, there was a collective 5050 that made many film festivals sign a deal that you should push more um, women filmmakers. And I really saw it like in terms of programming, we are reviewing film and we love this one and we love this one. And someone in the committee say, hey, look, there are not enough women. And then we have to dig into okay, women film submission, but no one puts a box to tick like you're a woman because now we are <laughs> with all gender and we should not have this kind of uh, uh, consideration. I mean, in France, it's not accepted. I, I think in the United States, they are more open to you should tick boxes and what are your origins and what is your gender. Sexuality, and so everything. Exactly, exactly. But in France, it's, uh, it's almost prohibited. <laughs> but I know that now um, programmers are really taking care of this, having more women. And of course, if you're coming from uh, countries out of Europe, uh, out of the United States, it's like the rest of the world. I mean, I have felt this. Some programmers take care of it. Some programmers don't care at all. And for me, it's still problematic because I represent the African continent. And as people have the belief that there is no film industry, no money there, so they don't care at all. And it's something like when a line, lineup comes out, uh, comes out and you don't have any African title, for example, I'm usually shocked because it's, it means that, okay, out of 54 countries, there's nothing as good as your criteria. So sometimes you have one title from one continent just to, you know, quiet people who will be angry. <laughs> Say, okay, we have one Asian film, one film from Africa, yeah. and uh, mostly no film from Oceania, and films from Latin America, and then uh, Europe, and North America. But yeah, it's not... I would just say now it's the, the good moment for women, but uh, regarding countries and so on, I, I won't tell you, like, change the country of origin of your films, because it, mm. it won't bring anything, I think. Uh, um, Florian, about uh, the market, can you tell me something about what is uh, Short Film Corner, what is a uh, coup metrage, and what a filmmaker can take advantage of, what can what a can filmmaker can do with in there? Well, uh, so like the Cannes court metrage is divided in two sections. So the, the competition, as we talk on one side, and the rendezvous industry, so Short Film Corner, so called, uh, on, one, on the other side. 
And uh, well, we we try to build events for different kind of filmmakers. I would say filmmakers that are at the very beginning of their uh, journey. I would say, so for them, we have like industry panels, we have uh, master classes, we have uh, workshops that can really help them on specific specific topics. We have tutored sessions, etc. We also do events for more advanced filmmakers. Um, it goes for, from like. Uh, pitch of uh, short films in development, pitch of short films in post-production, um, and also for, for first feature project. Well, you participated in, in this one, so you know well. Um, and yeah, and what are the advantages? Uh, for me, like, the most important as a filmmaker is that you are, you are really focused on the creation, and at some point you need also to meet the good persons to, to find the support for a next project or for this current project and this is in those kind of places that you can do that. Um, I also see Enrico in the audience and Torino Short Film Market for example is a good ex is a good example as well to like meet professionals because there, there are a lot. Um, so yeah at some point you also need to meet the decision makers that will help for your next project and also when traveling in festivals or markets, also try to have your next pitch ready, if, if I could say that. Like to, to have your next project, maybe if you have one already ready in mind, just to try to find the good connections for that. If someone can submit their results by invitation only. Sorry? Can someone sub submit to all these program initiatives that you have, or is it only by invitation? No, yeah, we, you have the different possibilities um, while well, we elaborate a, market, a creation of a market catalog so we don't take all the films that we receive we um, you can submit like just like in a festival a film festival and the film is watched and then we include it or not in the catalog or also some some uh, institutions uh, like audiovisual centers distributors such as Claire uh, um, can uh, uh, like submit a, um, a collection of short films to highlight them in the market catalog uh, and for some of the pro from some of the other initiatives that we have you can check the website some are only upon invitation and and uh, and some are really open, like the workshops, uh, the the breakfast, the meetings, etc. Uh, and there was a quite of a misunderstanding uh, here in uh, in Greece. I don't know if outside of Greece uh, before about uh, being, uh, let's say, invited or selecting in short film corner. It's there, there, is, yeah. it's, there, is, there is no selection in the short film corner. We... Something or is like, I mean, people are maybe they can misunderstand that they are in Cannes. Is it, they are not in Cannes if they are in short film corner, are they? Well, they are in Cannes physically because it's in Cannes, but uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we had a lot of trouble in the past, yeah, because of people uh, trying to say uh, to other prof professionals that we are selected in Cannes. But well, all the film professionals knows the films that are selected in Cannes, whether it is the Kazan, the Semen, or, or the competition. So it just like lies and stuff like that. <laughs> I wanted to add this. I want <laughs> because as so many filmmakers putting on social network, yeah, my film is in Cannes, and they are surrounded by people who do not work in the film industry. So they are all clapping and putting likes. And, oh my God, amazing! And so, but no, they just paid, and they have the film on the platform available for the film industry. But they're not. they not. They have not been picked up by a selection committee, and it's well. We should be. I guess you had troubles. <laughs> And uh, just to say that, yeah, it's important to have also information about what you want to do next because I know um, South African filmmakers, I was distributing a short earlier called Kanye Kanye and he went to the Oscar for student films and his film uh, toured worldwide. I think uh, clearly because it was before COVID that he mostly toured for two years traveling with his film, but he had no other projects. So all the meetings he was doing, when people ask, what's your next project? So the last time I met him, he was telling me, look, I have, I don't know how many followers on Instagram. And I was like, yes, but what's your next project? <laughs> and his producer told me it's really hard to put him back to write and to, because he, we lost him. We lost him during travels and we, his films was in 2014. We are in 2022. I'm not sure. And maybe he just completed a new film. So you see. So just be ready that, okay, maybe you will have a wonderful journey, but if your goal is to make films, so don't forget that it's your main goal. It's not just being in a fancy hotel and 
when you go back to your house, how do you pay your rent? How do you put f food in your fridge? I mean, that's important because sometimes we lose people. They are just happy to be on the red carpet and pictures and so on, but real life is not film festival life. That, that, that's a spark in your life, yeah. Is there a question from the audience that they want to ask these beautiful people? Do we have another microphone, please, for the audience? Thank you. Thank you. Hello, first of all, I had the opportunity to be in certain uh, international film festivals in the, past, in the past and now and in Cannes. And it's very important having you here all and also some very uh, interesting faces of the Greek production. Uh, I'd like to ask you about uh, taking the advantage actually from your last uh, statement. How much the social networks and the whole digital world and the new media thing that interacts somehow and creates certain environments of followers, creates a status towards uh, a, a movie, a short, a short story that is going to, to be uh, as a part of a program, and how much doesn't affect at all. And it's only other aspects, the ones that you already mentioned. Because we are in a, in a period, in a, in a world of, of networks, and new structures that exist in virtuality more than sometimes exist in the physical world, in the natural world. The online world. My first answer will be as distributor and sales agent of first focus is, is the film online or not? Because we will lose some deals, we will lose some TV, we will lose some VOD platforms. If you put your film right on uh, YouTube or Vimeo, like uh, openly. And regarding the films themselves, I won't say that it affects anything. I mean, we absolutely not consider films regarding the fact that the filmmaker has 10,000 followers or two, or doesn't have any account. Uh, I was just, uh, I'm just coming from Venice Film Festival where a French filmmaker called Alice Diop made a first feature, first narrative feature debut, and uh, she's not on any social networks. So she doesn't know about uh, what's going on, what people say. So I think it's more a marketing tool for filmmakers just to say, hey, I exist, my film is there, I'm, really, I'm super happy, I'm winning awards, I'm in this country and this country and this country. But I don't know any programmers, maybe they are, but I don't know any programmers uh, focusing on the prisons of people on social networks. But I think maybe in the past, Lars von Trier and all his uh, uh, yeah speech, well, it affected his career. So yeah, I would say it's not a matter of what or how many followers they have. Maybe it will be a matter of what they're saying if sometimes it can affect the career. Well, we'll see. I mean, I mean, at first you are being affected by uh, someone's career. I mean, if a, a big name, in a short film makes a short film. Maybe you will consider it like a. You will see the film for 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 sure. But also, you never know because I know that TikTok right now is a huge sponsor in Cannes. He's a sponsor here, so you never know what what will happen in the future. But it's mostly regarding the the the, the fame. Once you become famous and suddenly you are under the lights, everyone will, I mean, every bad people will dig into your accounts to find, I don't know, the sentence you said seven years ago or you wrote against, I don't know, which minority or which uh, anyone. And they, and they will use it against you because there are a lot of uh, jealousy and anger. So once someone is under the light, of course, people... The first place they can, because they cannot go into their letterbox, <laughs> but they can enter into their social networks and find maybe bad acquaintance as well. Oh, his friend with this, or he's been traveling to this country and it's forbidden, or he should not, and then it happens. Do you have another question from the audience? We have one more question to fill, please. You have your criteria for selecting films for the different parts of the, um, uh, the festival that you are in. Uh, but with, what is your personal uh, preference instinct? Um, technical stuff, the story, how, how do you judge that this film should be in your program? What is a good film for you? That's hard, huh? <laughs> um, 
regarding directors fortnight we are five in the selection committee and we have correspondent per territories so correspondent can bring films to us like oh i know i don't know this film from india you should take care of or you should really watch it uh, then we all watch the films and of course everyone has his own taste and and preferences uh, i'm I'm absolutely dedicated to emerging filmmakers or regarding French cinema, uh, filmmakers with a double cultural background uh, or black uh, filmmakers, filmmakers coming from the African continent. You know, this is my, uh, my line, let's say. But there are other programmers who really love uh, all the traditional French cinema from Jean-Luc Godard to, I don't know, Mia Hansen Love. They are these days. So, of course, when you arrive with what people love, it's all different. But then you have the delegate who has his own taste and he has the final word. So he is the one reviewing all the, the short films that we received, that we liked, and who will say, no, this one, uh, I don't really feel to put it in the, in the selection. And maybe he will bring another film we didn't really consider and say, whoa, this one is amazing. We should select it. So it's really a matter of everyone taste, but that the final word and the final line is more from the, the general delegates. And regarding Claire Montferrand, I could talk about the African perspective section I'm working in. So we watch all the films submitted from the, with an African continent quoted in the, in the production countries of origin. And then we push a list of films we like to the International Selection Committee. So they are the one reviewing and saying we put them in competition or not. And then they send us back the films that has not been selected. And amongst that, we make a selection and we offer to the producer and filmmakers to be invited in our section. But some filmmakers and producers do not want to because they want to keep their world premiere somewhere else. Like they want to have a competition for the world premiere, so they're not interested in a parallel section. And some other, they don't want to, because they don't want to be uh, selected as African. They want to be filmmakers, but not considered by the continent, because it's true that in Clermont-Ferrand, we don't have any Asian section or Oceanian section. We only have this African perspective, which works really well, but it's, you know, double side. Uh, so this is what I can say. Um, we have a room for another one. Yeah, please. Yeah, I have uh, one uh, short comment that uh, you never, in a question, you never know when something good is going to happen in your film, even from smaller film festivals. Uh, for example, at Los Angeles Greek Film Festival, uh, it's a little plug here for that. Uh, we do, we, we have relationships with directors. So, for example, Yorgo Zoe's films, they're all played there. Argiris uh, Papadimitropoulos, they've all played there. But also, Marius Piperidis from Cyprus, uh, he had The Mortalizer, which was a beautiful little short film. And based on that, we accept, we, he was in a project discovery forum with Hendrix, Smuggling Hendrix which getting the first prize there helped him, that's what Marius told me, helped him get finance from Cyprus on his film. That, that, that helped him open the doors for his major film. Uh, and, and, and so uh, awards from smaller film festivals can do wonders for, for some films uh, and should not be under, uh, they are kind of underestimated. Um, question for you is, if somebody has an acceptance from the director's fortnight at Cannes, why would they shop it somewhere else? Uh, and a final comment, uh, um, I, I agree completely with Amanda that Olympiacos will never get the Champions League, but Panathinaikos did get to the finals. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, that. Yes, thank, thank you. you for your question. Um, I don't think anyone will uh, take, like, refuse our selection at Directors Fortnite, except if they want to be in competition, because Directors Fortnite does not have a competitive section. We do have, like, special prize, the ED Prize and the European Cinema Label, but it mostly, I think, ED Prize stopped. 
I don't remember we had this this year, but you know they are parallel prize and the, they have their own jury. It's not a competition. So sometimes producers or I don't know want a competition. But I completely agree with what you said regarding all the work made worldwide by various film festivals. And I'm, I love to travel to many film festivals different from really small ones to big ones just to compare uh, how it works. And, and of course, when you come as a distributor and sale agent, let's say to discuss with a TV, the first thing they will ask is, what is the film's career? And then what are the film awards? So it's good if you've been selected there and there, but sometimes it counts a lot. If you win an award, then it doesn't matter from which festival. Of course, it matters if it's the biggest film festival, but sometimes you can also have from smaller. The only thing is, I think, that in the, maybe you would say the same, in the film industry, there are a lot of lazy people that uh, do not travel year round. So they focus on specific film festivals and they will check the lineup and they will select from there. And this is why I think everyone end up in the same places. It's because if you are selected, we had a short film selected in Oberhausen in Germany, which won an award over there. It's, it went crazy. Like for three years, the film has been requested every week from any places in the world, people were wanted this film and we were like, why? But I think it's because some programmers are following the official selection program of some film festivals and they hear about the film and they want to watch it. And it's the same thing uh, working on feature films. The day uh, I had a film in competition in Locarno, a feature film, the day they announced the lineup, we received tons of emails from programmers wanting the screeners and saying, we are completing a selection by the end of August and we would like to, to watch it. So they would never hear about the project if they were not following the lineup of this festival. So it's also this kind of journey that happens between film festivals and, uh, and film industry professionals. So um, before I go to the second part, just uh, to conclude and uh, maybe still a little bit of thunder, uh, I've never been selected to Cannes Film Festival, but I'm very satisfied with my film career. So uh, everything is possible. I'm very young. Oh my God, thank you. Uh, so now I want to be to the part two and uh, invite on stage Vasily Kivyaguma from Communication and PR Director of ECOME. Please come forward. Uh, ladies first, that's what I'm saying. Vasiliki, Yorgos Angelopoulos, Director of Development and Production of Greek Film Center, and Elias Dimitri, Filmmaker, Microfilm Curator from ERT. ERT. Welcome. Um, we are too many people right now. Uh, I have one question in order to bind the two parts. So my first maybe question to all of you is, uh, there is, a, uh, I feel uh, that there's a huge, a huge, there, there's a quite a, of a success stories from Greek filmmakers, especially short filmmakers around the world right now and the previous years. Do you feel there is a, a Greek wave of short films, not a, not a weird wave, don't misunderstand. Like, there's a focus on Greek short films, or it's just like individual success stories. I mean, do you watch Greek films because you have seen many successful short films, many good films, or it's just a dependent thing? It depends from programmers. As I said, some programmers will take care of different countries, and if they say that, if they see that there are many awards, or I don't know, from one certain country, of course they will take care of watching everything coming from there, like to follow up a little bit what's going on. But it's not necessarily, otherwise we, I mean, we review every film. So it depends really on programmers. <laughs> is there a Greek is, is there a Greek vibe you mean? Yeah. In the, in I mean uh, you, you you there is a, a Greek film uh, has been submitted to to the market or you, you you will see a Greek film, okay? Is it ah you say it's a Greek film and it's a good film? <laughs> yeah, it's a strange question. Uh I think it depends on the authors. Maybe there are more and more Greek films in festivals because like the authors are good and the producers as well. So I 
it's, and it can only be better be, get better because if there are some selection there will be more and more and more i guess for the market it's hard to to tell uh, we we some of the institutions uh, are as i said are um, presenting collection of shorts in uh, in our catalog so we have the various audiovisual centers and uh, for for the first year this this year there was a collection of greek short films because we also want to have a wide representation of the international uh, shorts so yeah and this is a way to promote it, I would say, more yeah. than. And uh, also, is there a way of collaborating the film festivals together, like the market of Cannes with uh, the market of drama, let's say? Is it possible? Is it something that could happen? And what could be that be? <laughs> we'll see. But uh, yeah, uh, definitely we, we collaborate with other uh, events. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Torino Shopping Market, which is now called Talents Shopping Market. We, we collaborate with them. We try to make the, the project travels. Uh, for various initiatives, we try to to make bonds between industry events, so it can really benefit for the filmmakers and for the project. If, and even more if there are projects in development or projects in uh, post production. I mean, Enrico, I know that it already is happening. Like uh, it has the Torino market, and they are collaborating with Drama. That's why I'm, I was asking. Uh, I think about the success of the Greek shorts. It's it's. I wouldn't imagine that it's a nationalistic thing. Oh, we need to find a Greek short. But I I think that the Greek, you know, one thing leads to another. So when the scene is energetic, and we are in drama, which is has been around for a long time, and and so many people have come out of here. When when one thing links to another, there's an energy in the scene. So for example, even subconsciously, when the Pandor is a Greek one. Or like for the past five or six years, I think there's been a Greek short in one of the can programs. And uh, I think for four out of these six years, it has won a prize. So that's a very, very good statistic. Obviously, I don't imagine that, you know, uh, Christian Jeune wakes up in the morning and says, ah, I need a Greek short. But one thing leads to another. And also because... Funding was so hard for many, many years for features. I'm not going to get into it. We have the institutions here now, but it was, you could make a short. You can make a short somehow. You no longer can make a, a feature somehow, I don't think. So a lot of these films were actually made very independently, like without the initial support of funds, and then the funds came in, like the film center and stuff. But like somebody got really upset and went and made a film, like Vasilis's film. Uh, our film was not that at all, but it was funded by a foundation, and then, you know, it was a commission, and then it was supported. So I, I think there's something to be said about the Greek mikromikades, the Greek people making short films, that one thing leads to another. And when you see that somebody can go to Cannes with an independent film that they made with their, like with very little money and with a lot of sweat, then you can actually think, oh, maybe I can do that too. And the same happened to my generation with features in the zeros, like, of course, Dogtooth was the big thing, that you thought, okay, the, if they did it, then maybe we can do it too, because also Dogtooth was made with very little money and a very different period, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think, and that's why it's important to talk about things, go to film festivals, watch the films, talk to people, you know, approach people, ask them. Are you approachable? People can come and speak to you afterwards if they want to? Yes. Okay, so the institution's uh, point of view about this uh, wave, is, is, there a way, is, is there a wave of, uh, in the Greek short film in the uh, place? Uh, thank you. So um, there is a surge in production and uh, we are thrilled that more and more uh, content is being produced in Greece. Uh, thanks to the institutions, thanks to the... Uh, uh, schemes, thanks to financial incentives, and I'm very happy to be with all of you here because we listen to a lot of buzzwords, hard work, 
approachability, openness, networking, and it's all about that. We, we are here to support everyone who is interested in making um, an idea come true. Uh, and they can choose amongst us, all of us, or they can come you know, separately and knock on our doors and we're open to see them and explain them how can they use our uh, incentives. We have a cash rebate program and it offers 40% um, on the eligible expenses incurred in Greece. And it's an open invitation to anyone uh, if they choose Greece as a destination for filming. And obviously for shorts, if you choose an international co-production, then you, you reach the minimum uh, spend and, and then you're here. And last year, the, the movie that got um, the prize here was also funded by the Cash Rebate program. And we are very proud when we see young people, uh, you know, take a leap of faith and say, hi, I don't know anyone. I just want to make a good film. How can I do it? And we, we want to say this, you know, how many times it's irrelevant. We will, be, we will be saying this over and over. Come to us. There is a dedicated team at ECOME, at the Greek Film Center, uh, at ERT, at, you know, anyone who wants to um, support you, they will be there to, you know, take you and guide you, but you have to work hard, you have to do your homework, you have to understand also what kind of audience you want to uh, reach out to, and this connects you to the festivals. And it's, it's, it's a long process, and you keep learning from that. And the thing that I admire most is when, when people take chances, because the money's there and you're going to get it. You have to, you know, hard, study hard and work hard, but you'll get it. And then the, the nice part comes after that. So for, for Greece, it's, it's, it's a great moment for production. We, we have, I mean, the, the numbers that we have at ECOME are pretty impressive. We have accepted over 230 projects uh, in a course of four years. And, and we've paid more than 40 million euro up to, to date uh, in, you know, features, including shorts. And, and, and this, is, this is something that, you know, helps us say we want more shorts. We want more productions here. So I'll give the mic to uh, the Greek Film Center to uh, continue on that. Because please don't be ashamed. Don't be, don't be intimidated. Don't be... Uh, frustrated. You don't have to know anyone. You don't have to know us. Just come to us and, and we're there for you. Yeah. Uh, hello. So to answer your question first, I'd say I, I'm not sure whether there's a way because the wave implies that uh, there is a common language. But I, what I believe is that there are many different strong voices out there and they just happen to be heard at the same time or we've just given the chance to express uh, uh, more eloquently, I don't know. So it seems to be our moment, and uh, I think that uh, the things have been working uh, better and more smoothly recently. There have been uh, problems in the past, I mean, uh, even in for the Greek Film Center, there were times in the past that things haven't been working properly. It's common knowledge, but uh, things are going uh, well uh, lately. Uh, we get to have uh, results very fast. So young people are gaining, again, uh, their trust towards the main film institution and main funding body of Greece. So that means that they can apply to our funding programs, they can actually uh, get evaluated properly and uh, they can get their first chance into uh, their f get taking their first step into the industry. And uh, that's why we're most excited to be here because uh, we feel like uh, uh, we want to introduce these young professionals to the industry. We want to be there for them. We want to come and talk to us and uh, that for the last uh, couple of years we have supported first time directors in short films and uh, more than half of the cases so don't be afraid come get in contact with us and uh, 
we're really looking forward to hear your voice as well. Okay. Um, regarding your question, Thanasis, I don't know. Uh, I don't have a clear answer, but I have to say that I really enjoy your uh, conversation, your questions, and you asked many things that m many of us, as uh, me as a filmmaker as well, we, we, we are afraid to ask these uh, uh, holy monsters that we have at your uh, right side. Uh, well, I, I don't know if there is um, a Greek wave, uh, uh, really, um, but uh, what I what what I um, I'm, I, w I will um, say something as a representative of a microfilm program which uh, uh, started at 2000 and the existence of, of uh, this program is because we won with the first year the, the first um, prize in Clermont Ferrand with Katerina Filiotu. So because of that um, uh, achievement, I think that the, the years they followed, we, we, we had many um, uh, participants that they came in microfilm program. Uh, one, one of these, it's, it's you, it's Yorgos Dois that they are here, it's Vasilis Kekadot so that we, uh, uh, we co-produced and funded his previous short film. And we were shocked because when we made the, his uh, uh, previous film, we, we said, but the first one was better than that, the, that uh, get the award in Cannes. So why, why didn't they, they accept that one? And um, it's always a, a very funny question. And, and we, we never know which is a good film, but we don't, we, we don't um, uh, ask for uh, this green film wave only. We, we um, search for good films. You're one of the, you are the main fund, uh, funders for short films and films, of course, in Greece, right? So you have the microfilm project, which is in uh, public television. Uh, you are Ecome, that cast rebate. Uh, you belong to, to the ministry. We are supervised by the Ministry of Digital Government. The of Digital Government and the Ministry of Culture is the Greek Film Center again. He can uh, also give money to short filmmakers. Uh, do you want to talk uh, something about uh, your institution and about the funding? Maybe uh, I have a question personally, like how a short film can make a can make it to Ecome, which is uh, uh, I, I think uh, when we take twenty thousand euros from a Greek film center, is it possible, for example, to go to Ecome, etc.? Yes, um, absolutely. You can get funding by the Greek Film Center and ECOME at the same time. The application process is very simple. Uh, it's uh, a digitized environment and um, the things that are very simple, uh, we, we can actually uh, explain them to you during you know, Zoom calls, uh, meetings, anything you want. Our head of the cash rebate program is also here with us. and. The one thing I just want to underline is that while this is a simple task, I mean, you, you only have to apply uh, at the latest 10 days before the beginning of production. You have to have your budget in place, your financial, you know, uh, sources. There is a cultural test, you know, a cultural test for any European funded project. It's a very, it's a very simple, uh, simple test. And... Um, you have a Greek VAT, or if you don't have a Greek VAT, you collaborate with uh, with a company, and that's it. There is no, you know, uh, there is not a complicated agenda or scenario. It's not uh, artificial intelligence or or anything. It's very real. It's very practical. Uh, the it's it, the eligible expenses uh, have to be at minimum sixty thousand euro to be. Uh, um, uh, included in the program, but the the things that we are witnessing since the beginning of the project, because we we've only been here since 2018, and every year we work with the results of the program. And COVID was a, a, an amazing opportunity for us. It 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 gave us the time. We didn't have the luxury of time because 
we all work, we travel, we, we network. And at the, at the time, we had the luxury of time to reflect on the things that we want to make better. So we made changes in national legislation regarding the application process and regarding the payment process. And for us, it's very important that right now we, we, we are very, very fast also at paying uh, the projects. It was it was something that was at the core of our um, uh, reform program that we, we that we launched uh, during COVID. So the the thing that pe people might feel you know overwhelmed by the number sixty thousand euro. Well, it turns out that you know you can make films for uh, for less short films for less, but. If you know that there is funding, then you can design your project and you can budget it accordingly. And you can find uh, collaborations abroad and this can lead you to a very successful um, uh, project. So don't be afraid of that. Don't, don't, feel, um, don't feel that you have to have the money in order to think about the project. No, come to us and discuss about your project. We can actually help you um, tailor-made you know, the, 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 the project to fit into the criteria because what, what we want to do is to actually support you with uh, the financial scheme. And we also support you with many other, you know, initiatives because we, we have programs, we have programs for skills development, we have, we, we actually have a, a, an amazing workshop happening at the end of September with the American Film Showcase. It's dedicated to animators and we want to help, you know, uh, projects find also their, um, their, their way to uh, the international audiences. So what we do, it's not just about catering for the money and, 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 and the uh, financing of the project, but also about the reality around it and how can we best uh, support you. And one of the reasons why we are, we are actually here, because you would say like, oh, if it's 60,000 euro and it's an expensive, you know, uh, budget, so what are you doing here? This is what, exactly what we're doing here. We want to support the festival. We want to support the festival and, you know, it's a global network and, and bring uh, the attention to Greece, to Greek filmmakers. Yeah. In, in my experience, I, I'm talking as a filmmaker now. I'm, I'm, I have taken once... 20,000 maybe from uh, a, a microfilm and another one's 20,000 from uh, a film center and then uh, I, the ministry. It was very, I, I never combined, so I would never have been to 60,000. And I know how much time consuming it is to, for a short film especially, to be to do this procedure. So I stayed with that money, which I, I we struggled to make the film. But I, I feel I would struggle a lot more if I try to make, because maybe then you have to make co-productions, private money, which a lot, I'm not, I'm not sure if you can find so many money, but it's a little bit hard, it's, right? It, it's true, but it's actually happening. We all we have short films in the rebate program right now, and they, the rebate that we are uh, giving back amounts to 230,000 euros. And and the, 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 the interesting thing is, you know, that it's not just international co-productions, it's also domestic projects. So the, 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 the numbers are relative. You, you cannot have that constraint when you start building a project. And I like the fact that, you know, um, Claire and Florian and uh, Amanda uh, underline this. Don't be intimidated by, by, by what it's out there, you know. It's, 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 part of, uh, it's part of the game. It's part of how the industry works. You have to focus on your project. You have to focus on your hard work. And, and you have to be practical about it. And it will happen, for sure. So, uh, regarding short films, there are actually um, three funding options at the Greek Film Center. The one is the main short film program where you can apply for up to 35,000 euros. And then we have the micro-budget program where you can apply for really low-budget films. And finally, the complete films program where uh, we have the chance to support, uh, even at the very end, a short film that has been recognized in an A-list festival. So even if we're not there from the very beginning of the journey, we know that uh, when something is recognized, uh, we know that we need to be there and support it and re reward the young talents, even at the very last point. 
So, but other than that, uh, the Greek Film Center is, offers a whole support system. So it's not just the funding part, it's also the um, a last film uh, department. Uh, where they actually promote Greek uh, films abroad and uh, having a strong presence in festivals like Cannes for almost 40 years. And there is a Fil Hellenic Film Commission department uh, where they um, attract foreign productions to come and shoot in Greece and even Greek filmmakers by offering, for example, the database uh, for locations. So, it's a whole support system that um, makes our best, basically, to support young uh, professionals, but also established ones. Uh, well, uh, we go deeper than that, because um, we don't just promote films, and uh, but uh, we invite each year. Uh, it's it's a yearly competition, and we invite each year from uh, January to to mid March, ma uh, March. and um, uh, we have about uh, three hundred to uh, four hundred film applications. And uh, because I noticed that you like uh, calculation, is so it's, it's it's about the two percent that you have chance to to get approved by microfilm program. So yes, you you, uh, you have to apply, but I, I said uh, we go deeper because we have the it's obligatory obligatory to to follow the script labs. So it's not just a competition. We don't we don't just fund films. We we care from the very beginning of these films from from the idea to to the end, and uh, I have a. You are as a witness that we were discussing the final uh, editing of your females as well, if you, if you if you remember. So it's from the big from the beginning we follow the the filmmakers and then we have the script labs. We go to the shootings if they want to. We are not pushing any anyone. We are not pushing uh, as I didn't push you uh, if you remember. We don't push anyone. We. We let the, the filmmakers to decide and ma make their their films as they dreamed uh, uh, that, uh, it. And uh, we, in, in the first years, we were supporting the films to the film festivals, and we were trying to to give money uh, and in order to to have some uh, sort of wa waivers in order to apply to the film festival. But uh, as the the applications were. More and more, and the and the and the, um, the film festival were so many, a tremendous number of film festivals. Then we decided to stop that, uh, um, helping uh, this. Uh, I mean, budgeting the waivers. But we, what we we ask, we ask for because we are television, and we we want these films. Uh, to be shown in the tele in the television, in the national television, and then in, now in uh, Earthflix, as we say, it, which is a platform, and you, you can see the films there, and, and the films stay about three months on the platform. So um, uh, we we want these films to to be shown there. So we want these films to have the rights of it. So we ask for at least to have the fifty percent of uh, of the budget. To be co-produced uh, with uh, with Earth, unless if it's a national, um, international co-production, which uh, there we don't ask this percentage to be, uh, because uh, you can we can ask only for ten or twenty percent. It, it depends for for the for the production. Well, we need more percentage in the the film funds. I was mentioning two percent is uh, very low. <laughs> Uh, is there any final question for uh, for our beautiful panel? Hi, everyone. I'm very grateful for this panel, and I wanted to thank you all. I've been attending the Drama Film Festival for the last 20 years, and I think none of us here would have ever imagined back then that we would be talking about Greek shorts being selected and awarded in Cannes. It's amazing how much we can learn from these professionals that have attended here, this festival this year from uh, Cannes, and thank you. 
I've been attending Cannes drama for the last 20 years, as I said, as a critic, as a film commissioner, working recently for the Greek Film Center. And it's been one of my favorite festivals because of the young talents, because of the passion they have and the enthusiasm they have. And the amazing thing about this panel today is that you bridge two worlds. You bridge the world of funding with the world of premiering of a film, right? And I think the link between these two is the producer. So I have a question to Amanda, because all these people here, the newcomers, the newcomer directors, always envision their life as a successful life of a filmmaker that attends big festivals, gets a word, and then the red carpet is all there. But could you give them tips how to find the right producer? How do you find the right producer for your program, for your projects, in order to build, to build trust? Because the producer will go and knock the door on the film, Greek Film Center, and ECOME, and ERT. The producer will knock the door on Cannes Festival. And at the same time, what are your tips that you require to see in a filmmaker in order to trust him and marry him? To take him to this long journey from funding to premiering. Thank you. That's a tough question. I mean, it's not really a question, it's a discussion. Um, I am a people's person and I trust my instincts. I've made many mistakes. I think it's fine, you know, I'm still here, so they were manageable mistakes. Um, there's taste, which is very personal. I like this, I like this short, I like this outfit, I like this person. Um, sometimes you like the shorts or the outfit or the person, but you think it's not for you. This is very personal to me. I can't explain it. Um, I know I won't be able to handle their character. Or I like, I can see that I like the movie. It's not even about shorts, it's about features. But it's not for me, and I don't think I'm for them. It's, it's more... Uh, for, on my part, it's instinct, and I'm interested in the person being a good person, what I consider a good person. I don't want them to be, you know, I can't swear, but I like good people, and I think I am one too, a decent person, you know. Um, and, a, and a person who wants that collaboration the way that I can give it. Because with every person you work differently, I think there's one way to work with direct, to make films, and that's to trust the directors. There's a, there's, I, the producer can go so far, and I'm not undermining our role. I think we get a lot of SIHIT, but so do they. But there's only one way, in my view, to make, in our kind of system, I, you know, if I was at, at you know, Amazon or Netflix or, or Warner Brothers, I would say different. But uh, in, in my ecosystem, which I think is our ecosystem, there's only one way, you've got to trust the director. That's not to say you don't disagree. That's not to say you don't try to, you know, put them in a, in a frame, but you've got to trust the director. They're going to make the movie. So navigating that and trust, trust is not about money. Trust is about trust. You know, Hal Hartley, trust, trust me, only if you trust me first. Um, so that's a very personal thing, how to do it. Now, for the directors, how, because I think that's more important. Um, again, I would suggest, like the person, like their work. Um, it's, it's a good thing in this job that we have a filmography, all of us. We have something to say for ourselves. So that's your business card. That goes for them, but that goes for the director because assuming the director is a young person who's just starting out, so they don't have so much to show, but they have a lot to see. So we're a small country. Everybody knows everybody. It's very easy to see what kind of films a producer has made. So see if you like those th that kind of lineup and that kind... It's, it's what... Uh, um, about the uh, Kanzen. The Kanzen is not about a different way of storytelling. So it, it's their profile. See what the profile is. It's also very easy to meet these people. You know, we're not hidden someplace. It's a very small country. 
everybody can meet everybody. Go for a drink, see, see what you think. And then there's, you know, I mean, once I was in a festival and Leos Carax, who is one of the f most breathtaking filmmakers working today, I think, probably very bad to work with, producer, director, but that doesn't say anything. He was asked about how he used Kylie Minogue for, for um, what was the film called? Holy Motors. And he was asked about that and he said, well, you know, uh, Claire Denis, who is a friend of mine, she suggested we go to dinner because we would like each other. And we went to dinner, and I really liked her, and it seemed that she liked me. And I don't know, by the end of the dinner, it felt like a date, and we, we took the next step, for, like relationships, like how do you start with a, with a person. I know I'm not helping anybody, but really, it's a lot about instinct. Of course, try to find out if that person, if, you know, the people who have worked with them have been happy with them, if they have, you know, paid their debts to, to the crew, to society, to the film center, are they liked by the funders? It, um, try to find out what you, because that's the advantage of a small country. If somebody is a SHIT, then you can know about it. Or if somebody's indecent, then you can know about it. But there's no accounting for how two people relate to each other. You need to, able to be able to trust your producer. So it's got to be somebody that you can leave a, part, a very important part of your life on. So try it out. And making a short film is also, I mean, it feels like the beginning of the end. But like I said to Thanasi, you know, it's, you're going to make many films. So why don't you start with a small project with a producer and see if it works out and then continue? Because that's also an advantage of short films. You know, it's not a feature. It doesn't take three years. It can take three months. It can take six. Try it out and see how it goes. Because it's not the end of the world. You'll make another one and then another one and then a feature and many features. And that's who you will be. Well, world, I don't know if I, I don't. Uh, a word of mouth uh, has a great power as well, and maybe greater than a good portfolio. So we are in Greece, and we can talk in, to each other. I believe in yeah. filmographies a lot. Because for me, it, maybe sometimes it's more important the relationships and the good vibes and the good people rather than a good portfolio for me as a I, filmmaker, because I also, I'm the only filmmaker here. I had a question because I'm really new to the Greek film industry, uh, so it's a question for the funders. Do you have any kind of uh, Greek awards, uh, any kind of support of um, all the film you supported, making them travel in the movie theaters in the country, or just how to attract the non-film professional audience to know that there is a new wave or there are filmmakers traveling worldwide? How do you push that? Is there any program? So there is a department at the Greek Film Center, the Hellas Film Department, which is basically one of its responsibilities is to actually promote uh, films and only, not only through the festival circuit, but also through uh, supporting their release. So they offer um, financial support in order for the producers and for the um, sales and uh, uh, people responsible to, you know, deliver the film to the audience to make whatever is necessary in order to uh, strengthen their uh, its delivery to the audience, In including short films or just for feature film. Well, uh, short films mostly for the festival. To be honest, yeah, we actually want to support uh, uh, the filmmakers and their producers by paying, for example, the transfer and their hospitality in, in order to be able to go there and support their films and be there with their presence and uh, promote it themselves and the network uh, and build relationships for their next films. So that's uh, the main uh, support we offer for short films in order of uh, promotion. Because it could be nice to have a collection of, uh, let's say, famous uh, Greek shorts 
that could be touring in the country or throughout theaters, I don't know. And you can also be eligible for the Nuit en Or in France. It's hosted by the French César Academy. Uh, ah, it works. Okay, because any film that won in their own country the major award regarding shorts are eligible for the Nuit en Or and then the touring uh, in the entire uh, Europe, I think, with all those film winners. So. Well, something similar has ha happened for feature film mostly of the past, but uh, I think there are many um, actions prepared for the future, and, uh, but I, it's not under my superstition. So uh, basically, I, I'm not uh, very knowledgeable of this specific topic to be able to answer to you right now, because I'm mostly in production. But uh, there are many things that are organized in the in cooperation with the Hellenic Film Academy as well. Sorry, sorry. Uh, re regarding the awards, uh, where television, uh, as I mentioned before, um, uh, we have awards in international film festival. Uh, let's say in in drama, we we sponsor the the first film with three thousand euros and the. First documentary, uh, if I'm if uh, I'm not mistaken, with one thousand euros, but uh, I think that um, uh, we uh, work. Uh, uh, of course, uh, the the film festival of, of drama has this. Um, uh, the the f the festival of drama uh, drama is traveling, uh, so all the films are traveling in, in Greece. But re regarding my job, uh, um, uh, there is a conversation. Of uh, the uh, this year's awarded films to be projected in in uh, Earthflix, which is uh, uh, so it, it 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 can be as an award for for these uh, short filmmakers to to show their films to to broader uh, public. Yeah, because I do I run a short film touring program and. One major reaction I have from the audience is when I go to movie theater, because I do this work, I go to people. So I travel to many uh, cities in France, in the United States, in some African countries. And each time the audience react the same, like, we never know those guys exist. We never know those films exist. So it's a matter of yeah, going and attracting people. It's, uh, sorry, I just wanted to add something um, to uh, what about the uh, and yours re regarding oh, the promotion side because for us it's also important uh, sponsoring a festival so this is one of the reasons why we, we support we actively support the drama film festival and the Thessaloniki film festival and the anima series international film festival we we are um, building relationships with um, with festivals across Greece that have an international outreach and we help them um, create new um, actions, new uh, projects within their markets that will attract more um, um, uh, professionals from abroad. And, and this creates more visibility, not just for the projects, but also for uh, producers and filmmakers. And the other thing is that you have a festival we are here at one of the most important festivals uh, in Greece because they are trying their best to create more visibility for the projects. And like uh, like mentioned, uh, the collaboration, the potential collaboration with ERT for their platform, their digital platform, Earthflix, or um, the streaming of last year's projects on YouTube uh, through the collaboration with Onassis Culture. Uh, these are um, uh, these are choices, uh, conscious choices from the festival uh, to uh, promote more uh, this film. So you have a strong festival, you have visibility, and we are happy to back uh, a festival to make it even stronger. So, yeah. Thank you for supporting festival. Uh, so let's meet at the theaters because it's important to watch all these films and what we are talking about because without the audience, there would not be festivals or producers or funders. So it's important to be in the festivals. And we are inviting you today as well uh, in the, uh, to fully book all the screenings and all the venues. And thank you very much, my beautiful uh, panel. They are amazing. Thank you. And yeah, they are approachable. So meet them. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>